All right, and what is going on, everybody? Quan Incredible here to bring you the review for Black Clover Chapter 253. And so, like, with this chapter, it not, like, too, too much happened. I mean, it was just more of the continuation of Bonica and Noel's fight. I mean, we, we were getting, like, some pretty decent information. But this chapter was, like, pretty straight to the point like there wasn't a lot to look into but there's still some things that we can talk about so uh it basically starts out with um right after noelle had pierced vanica straight through her stomach or chest area whatever you want to call it um but yeah she got stabbed or whatever and then like immediately goes 50 percent now vanica was shocked that there was someone that could tag team with uh laurel which i mean that is kind of neat i mean i'm not... to me i would assume most water magic users could probably tag team with each other i mean i just feel like they would be able to like it's like i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't be super shocked if like magna could team up with like leo or like if gaja and luck could team up it's like i feel like same element people you know i feel like that's super basic but whatever she was impressed anyway so like i said she goes 50 percent and like laurel pesca is shocked because um this huge mana method lucid sanctuary bubble i'm just gonna call it the, the big bubble the big bubble thing makes it like hard for vanica's magic to like solidify or whatever because she uses blood magic so like basically trying to use blood inside of water just is way harder to do which makes sense but she's shocked that laurel i mean laurel is still shocked that vanica is this strong inside of the water bubble and uh as we've seen in the last chapter it's supposed to cut the power of her blood magic in half so this entire exchange vanica is severely weakened while laurel's not really directly confronting her noelle's kind of fighting her but at least laurel's magic is boosting noelle so as the fight goes on, nothing of note really happens outside of like Vanica just going up one percent at a time. And we see that like uh, in the chapter they even say that, like going up one percent is like a huge uh, boost in power. Now I feel like what's going on in the chapter kind of betrays the statement just because she goes up one percent, and Noel says it's way stronger, but it's like nothing of note is really happening that makes us at least like as me the reader would make me believe it was much stronger outside of her statement it's like she's not doing damage like it's like i, I don't know i almost wish tabata would have showed this better like like yeah you had noel say it but like i wanted to actually see it because right now it's just one of those things where it's like oh my gosh she got so much stronger it's like but did she though like it looks the exact same like she's still swinging around <laughs> trying to hit noel in the water bubble and, and like can't i mean it just I, to me it wasn't a good show of like how much stronger it was it could be nitpicky but i mean you know that's just what i noticed let me know what you guys thought did you guys like really feel like it was shown that she was way stronger am i being nitpicky l l let me know about that i, I i'm definitely curious but yeah, the other thing is, um, during the fight, Noah asked her about her mom, like, oh, is this how you killed my mom, uh, Acer, the, uh, the Clover Kingdom or whatever, and Monica's like, I don't even know who that is, and it, like, that's kind of funny to me, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, some people want it, like, more of, like, this dialogue or backstory, but it's kind of funny just because, like, Monica doesn't even care. Now, the one thing that I do hope, I, or that I don't want, like, it's like, I hope that this doesn't happen, is, like, I hope... Because I obviously don't think that this is going to be the end of Noelle and Vanika's, like, encounter. But, like, I, I really hope that when Noelle eventually beats her or gets to, like, stand on more even ground with her and Vanika's in, a, in like, a, a situation, I really hope Vanika's like, oh, my gosh, you're the daughter of that girl. I really hope that doesn't happen. That is super cliche and played out. I do not want that to happen. That whole, I have just now remembered who you were after I said I didn't care. I hate that so much. So I hope that that doesn't happen. Maybe you guys like it. I don't. I think it's corny. <laughs> but anyway, we get a bit of like Noel or not, not Noel, Mimosa. Mimosa fighting that tongue guy. I don't even remember if they said his name. <laughs> if they did, let me know what it is down below. But I, I don't even remember if they said his name. But, like, their fight literally has made no progress at all, which I was kind of disappointed. It's like, Mimosa's still wrapped up, still he's wrapped up with the vines or whatever. Just, like, they couldn't have done anything else, something. I mean, his magic is pretty lame. I mean, Mimosa's not a fighter. It's just, the whole thing was just like, geez, I wish this was going somewhere. But this just served as, like, a, you know, they just used Mimosa to kind of, like, trigger the whole flashback of, like, uh, Laura Pesca talking to her and Noelle about being scared of dying and it makes sense because you don't really think about it just because like 
every, things have been like the way the story has been for us everything's like just happening 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 so there's not really a lot of time for us to consider how the characters are feeling right now so i do think this is a great opportunity uh or a great use of time to like show that laurel is actually really scared of dying and things like that uh because the only side that we ever see of her is kind of the clumsy princess or like this all-powerful princess we don't really get to see like how she feels i mean we could assume she was afraid but it was good to you know actually get that characterization that oh yeah i'm like super afraid of dying and then the one more thing about that exact scene was how Gaja was just like tucked off in the cut, just chilling, just like listening to their conversation. I'm not for sure if that's like a foreshadow for something. I'm not for sure what it could be foreshadowing. Like maybe Gaja will die instead of Laura Petchka, or maybe when she dies, Gaja will go crazy or something. I don't know. I mean, or it could just be he's her personal bodyguard and he's just chilling or behind the corner. It's just, I don't know. I feel like I feel like they knew he was there. Like, at, or at least I feel definitely like like Laura Peska knew he was there and like and like Undyne. I mean, they they literally have Monozone over the entire country. I feel like they knew he was there. So it's like I wonder was he hiding, or or like what? You might as well have just been standing out there. That it's a really unimportant part of the chapter to me, but it's just I wanted to touch on it. So then for whatever reason, uh, Vonica decides to go full 70%, which is weird because I could have swore they said that the Dark Triad members can go up to 80. Uh, I don't know if this is because either A, Vonica is just weaker than Zeno and Dante, or B, uh, she just can't unleash her full power inside of the water bubble. I mean, it could be either one. It, it makes sense either way. Um, so yeah, her full apparently her full 70 percent she gets like her tail and like this marking on her chest thing um kind of it was it doesn't remind me of dante's but dante also had a marking on, on his chest when he went to the higher percents but yeah she has one too and a lot of people were saying or drawing this like um what is it drawing this like connection between Asta and Vonica like people are speculating that Asta when he went berserk mode that he went 70 percent now i'm not really for sure how true that is i mean i could see it just because like the face kind of went over to both sides for both of them uh as you can see and also uh they both got tails now the the main thing here is vonica's 70 percent isn't down her leg uh or so she doesn't have like a claw foot or anything whereas asta did so from this you could either speculate that uh asta was an even higher percentage than that like say 80 or so or you could speculate that um all devil transformations are different that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Uh, at least that, that's how I think. I think all the transformations are somewhat different. Just because, like, I mean, we see that uh, the black form for all of them, like, materializes on different sides. Like, Vonica's is the opposite side. Or it's either Vonica or Zeno is on the opposite side of Asta. And then Dante's, like, it was like his whole face down. So it's like, it could just be different people just transformed differently. That's what I would like, like to think of it. And then... People were saying that, like, oh, Asta's uh, tail, when he was in his preserved form, looked like a, a, a clover, which I think it does, and that Vonica's looks like a spade. Now, to me, I even tweeted this on Twitter for anybody who may have seen it. It looks like a heart. It looks like a heart to me. And to me, either... How do I want to say this? So, like, if there is meaning or, like, small hints or Easter eggs in their transformations or in their tails, I think it would make sense for hers to be a heart over a spade, just because she's not the strong... I don't believe she's the strongest member of, of the, the Dark Triad, so I feel like if they were using the spade, they'd save her for somebody else. And uh, her marking on her chest looks like the marking on her tail. So I think since it's like actually right side up on her chest, it looks like a heart instead of a spade. So I think that's the intended way for us to look at it. That's just what I think. I mean, if you think it looks a little like a spade and you don't wanna hear what I'm talking about, that's totally fine. But I mean, when you look at it, a spade, it's kind of just like an upside down heart kind of vice versa so i mean it could be either one that those that's just my two cents on it and uh anyway after she goes full 70 percent that's when we finally get narrow coming out of literally nowhere people have been wondering where she was for so long was she even there uh was she fighting someone else what was she doing she finally came in and their plan was once vanaka unleashes full 70 percent uh, or full power full uh once vanaka unleashes her full devil power Nero was supposed to come in and i good on Laura Petrica to know that Vonica is the kind of person that would just go full power for literally no reason because I mean it's not like she's really pressed I mean she granted she did get stabbed in, in the chest earlier but uh from her transformation it looked like she healed at some point in time I'm not for sure when well, I kind of would have liked to see that a little bit like do they all like 
does she have regeneration or was this the work of blood magic or was this the work of the transformation like how did she heal because there, there isn't a hole anymore like it's it's, it's just gone. Even anyway, so once she goes full power, and Nero's supposed to jump in and seal her. And it was cool because Nero's also using the mana method thing for the internal sealing prison or whatever. And it looks like the exact same spell she sealed um, Zagrid with, um, which is cool because she needed like the forbidden stones to even do that. Now, this is how the chapter ends. So that could mean either at the beginning of the next chapter, we're probably going to get like. The aftermath of this obviously but like she was able to seal the grid with the forbidden stones for 500 years so it's one of those things where they may be able to potentially seal Vonica for some amount of time granted the grid is way weaker than Vonica just because uh, what are they well they said that Majecula was way stronger than he was and then when um, Nero sealed him he was still in his like little ghostly ghastly form so he wasn't even in his full form so like Nero sealed a significantly significantly weaker version of a devil than the one she's trying to seal now granted she is using what like mana zone and runes and mana method and all that so her spell is probably exponentially power exponentially more powerful but so is the person so is the the target so i guess we'll see how that goes i don't particularly think she'll like i don't know it, it could go one of two ways either a i think she'll seal her but for like a very short period of time like like a super super short period of time or b it just won't work at all i don't think this is going to be like oh yeah she sealed her for like 100 years or 50 years and we're going to deal with her later it's like probably gonna be like oh she sealed her for like a couple minutes max either a couple minutes max or it doesn't work at all that's kind of what i think um i don't know what you guys think is going to go uh, how it's going to go with uh Nero attempting to steal Bonica. um let me know what you guys think of the chapter down below like i said it was it was a fight so not really tons and tons of like stuff to look into or to talk about it's pretty straightforward um so we are going to have a break for next week. So I'll think of like a different video for you guys for instead of a chapter review. I might do like two regular videos or just another regular video on Sunday. Not for sure yet. Maybe a live stream. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, like I said, um, like and sub if you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate all that stuff a lot. And yeah, I don't got anything else to say. So I'll catch you guys in my next video.